Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit today about forces as vectors. And by that, that means that we're going to talk about forces, the direction of the forces, and how those forces act on objects. We'll talk also a little bit about Newton's second law. We'll talk a little bit about Newton's first law. And we'll also just talk a little bit about something called equilibrium. So let's take a look first of all at the diagrams I have here on this paper. On this paper I have some diagrams. They, they show a, a box sitting on the surface of perhaps a table. The arrows represent forces. And you notice that the arrow shows a direction. Well, when this box sits on this table, the weight of the box acts downward. So this downward arrow represents the force of weight. And I can actually label that. I'm going to give this box a weight of 10 newtons. That would be the force of weight. And of course, that's acting downward. The upward arrow happens to be the reaction force of the table pushing up on the box. When you set an object on a table, the weight acts downward, but the table has to apply an equal force in the opposite direction by the way, that's Newton's third law of action and reaction forces. The weight acts downward, the force of the table acts upward on the box, and if the box is acting downward with a force of 10 Newtons, that means the table is going to push upward with a force of 10 Newtons also. So we'll call that force, that upward force, we'll call that the force of a reaction. Now, that places these two forces, because they're in opposite directions, but they're equal in magnitude, that places vertically, that places these forces into a state of what's called equilibrium. In other words, they're equal to each other. And when they're equal to each other and opposite in direction, it's like a tug of war. They cancel each other out, and the net force vertically acting on this box would be zero. Net force, that's sort of like when you add all the forces up, the total of the forces that's left is the net force. It's sort of like if you were to get paid and you got a paycheck at the end of the week or the end of the month, they would take out taxes and Social Security and all that stuff. And you have your gross pay. That's the total amount that you earn. And then you have your net pay. That net pay is what you have left over after they take everything out that they're supposed to take out. And forces are sort of like that also. When you add all the forces up, the net force is the force that's left over. So if you have down 10 newtons and up 10 newtons, that equals zero. So vertically, that's in equilibrium. Well, we're going to pull on this box to the right, and we're going to pull on it with a force of 4 newtons. And we're going to pull on it to the left with a force of four newtons also. Well, you can see that these are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction so that they basically cancel each other out. So the total force, the net force, the total net force acting on this box is equal to zero newtons. So that box has a net force of zero newtons acting on it that means that that box is in equilibrium. That box is in equilibrium. Well, let's take in another take a look at another situation over here. Here's another box. And I'm going to give this box the same weight. I'm going to say that the weight of the box acting downward is 10 newtons. The force of the table, the reaction force of the table acting upward is also going to be 10 newtons. And uh, let's see, I can label those. I'll label this force of weight. I'll label this force of the reaction. And I'm going to pull on this box to the right with a force of 4 newtons. And uh, let's just say that when I pull on the force to the right, that the the somebody else is pulling on this other side, they're pulling on it 
to the left with a force of, let's say, three newtons. So this is really sort of like a tug of war. And since this guy's stronger, this guy's a little weaker, the difference between these two is one newton. And since it's to the right, the largest force is on the right, the net force acting on the box is going to be, to the right, one newton. The net force is equal to one newton right. Now, let's go over that again. These two cancel each other out. They're equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Ten newtons down, ten newtons up. That cancels each other out. However, four newtons to the right and three newtons to the left means that this guy is actually going to be pulling with a force of one newton to the right. Three of those newtons, three of the four newtons is canceled out, so he's pulling on it with a force of one newton to the right, actually. That would be the net force. So the net force is one newton right. Now we'll take a look at another situation, the third situation. And again, the weight of the box, the force of weight, is going to be ten newtons. But I want you to think about this a little bit differently. You know in math class where you have that coordinate system and to the right is positive and to the left is negative and down is negative and up is positive? Well, it's the same thing here. You can actually think of this as that coordinate system. And the force of weight, since it's acting downward, that's going to be negative. And the reaction force, the force of reaction, the table pushing up, is going to be positive. And the force to the left, and I'm going to give the, or the force to the right, rather, I'm going to give this a force to the right of positive 20 newtons. And to the left, we're going to pull on it with a force of negative 10 newtons. Now this becomes a little bit easier to understand because now we're not just talking in terms of right and left. We're actually quantifying this and we're giving this each of these numbers a sign. It's either going to be positive or negative. So what we're doing here is horizontally, we can say along the x-axis, we can say negative 10 plus positive 20, and that gives us horizontally, along the x-axis, that would give us a, a net force of plus 10. And of course, since both of these are equal in magnitude and opposite direction, negative 10 plus positive 10 gives you zero. So the net force acting on that box is equal to positive 10 newtons. Now that's not difficult. Well down here I have several other boxes and I already have the forces labeled here and what I'd like you to do is just take a minute and see if you can figure out what the net force is for each of these boxes. So go ahead and take a few minutes, put the video on pause, and see if you can figure out the net force on each, on each of these boxes. All right, now we're back. Let's take a look at these again. Uh, we have, and you can see here I put some signs in here to help me, we have positive four and negative four, so vertically that would give me zero newtons, and then we have negative four plus positive six, 
So that's going to give me a net force of positive 2 newtons. On this one, let's go ahead and put some signs in here. We know that down is negative, up is positive. And we have uh, to the right, which is positive, and to the left, which is negative. So we have negative 10 and positive 10 vertically. On the y-axis, that that's going to be 0. But on the x-axis, we have negative 16 plus positive 12. And that's going to give us negative 4 newtons as our net force. The difference between positive 12 and negative 16 is going to be negative 4. There's your net force. All right, the next one over here, the last one, let's see how you did on this. Of course, we have negative 10 newtons, that's down. Positive 10 newtons, up. Then we have to the right, we have positive 10 newtons. And to the left, we have negative 10 newtons. And that is going to place this box in equilibrium. because the net force is equal to zero newtons. Now, the net force doesn't mean that there are no forces acting on the box. It just means that the sum total of the forces acting on the box equals zero. It also, you'll learn this in the future, has a lot to do with Newton's first law of motion. Because even though the net force acting on the box is zero, that doesn't mean that the box has to be sitting still. That box, you'll find out in a future video, could actually be moving at a constant velocity. That's what Newton's first law says. And we'll talk about that in a future video. So what should you remember here? Remember how to find net force. And also, remember what equilibrium means. Equilibrium means that the net force acting on the object is equal to zero.